let's go into architecture and go to the next one over, door. So doors and windows function almost exactly the same. If you understand how to do a door, you'll understand how to do a window. It's super straightforward. And a lot of the components are similar, um, but doors and walls, I mean windows specifically, are very like closely related. So there's some kind of tricks to them. So um, I want to kind of go over those, and then you can kind of get the hang of it. And then we'll, we'll start here. This is where I'll, I'll introduce you to how to load a family and then how to actually make a different version of a specific uh, door type so we can make a custom one. Um, so let's get started with that. First thing you want to do is click door. And depending which view you're in, so you can't just drop a door out in space, right? Because if you think about it, in Revit, it knows that's a door and doors don't just float out in space on their own. Typically a door would be within a wall, right? So in order for Revit to be able to place the door component, you have to host it onto a wall. So something that is a wall family. So if we move it over one of the walls, if I activate this view, notice how it appears and it gives you dimensions and different swings and you can do it on any wall so if I zoom in here, let's place this here. So we have that little recess, let's put a door like that. If I wanted to place that door like that, just as it is, you can just click. And it will drop it in. If I orbit this view so that you can see it, there's my wall with the door in it. If I want to place one here, I can move this around. If you hit spacebar, I'm hitting spacebar, you can't actually see it on my keylogger, but I am. So if you look here, you can see it flipping the orientation of that door. Um, or you can put it like this. So once you've placed it, notice here you're seeing the dimension strength. So if I hit modify here, this just gives me my mouse back. I can click on the door, and right now, these active dimensions are snapping to the center line of the door and then it goes to center line of the wall. I'm going to drag here from where it says move witness line and I'm going to go to the exterior face here. So here's a cool tip with Revit. As you're moving any sort of object or you're trying to make a selection, if you use the tab key, you will cycle through all possible choices that are there. So sometimes it won't give you the right thing. So notice here it snaps to the center line of the wall or to the face of the wall. And then you let go and you're happy. Here I want to move this to there. So one foot eight, let's say for a reason I wanted two feet there. Notice the door moved. If I ended up placing this door with the wrong swing, I could then come here and hit this little arrow or I can flip it back to the inside, or I can flip it this way. And notice it's changing in all of these views at the same time. So if I wanted to see that elevation view, we can double click here. And then I can close this one and move this one in. And there you go. You're seeing that the same thing is happening in all these views. If we grab this one, let's say we want to do that same two feet dimension here, we can grab that there, grab this to there. Oops, I don't think I actually had it selected. There we go. And then, oh, I double clicked on there, that happens sometimes. Oh, I've converted this into an actual dimension, that's not what I was trying to do. So now I want to drag the witness line there and click it. So now we have that. It's kind of mirroring itself. It's kind of strange having this many doors. Maybe you need them. Um, so now that we have that, let's start looking at um, what if I want to change that to a different type of door? Um, swing this out now. Um, 
what if I don't want single flush 36 by 84? Like, what do I do? So if you click here, you'll see the family of single flush and all these different types. Single flush 30 by 84, 3284, 3480. So that rather family is 36. I mean, is single flush. The type is 36 by 84. And if I change this, notice here it got skinny. I can go for the biggest one, so it's wider and taller. But let's say I wanted one that's eight feet tall. Like I don't have any of these that are eight feet tall. So now let's do our first custom uh, type. So the family, we've selected it, single flush. Now let's say I want to change this and I want to create a new family type that has eight feet as the height. So notice here the height is seven. If I were to go in here and change that to an eight, both those doors will become eight. That's not what I want to do. I want to keep this and I want to make a new version. So I'm going to go duplicate, change this to 36 by 86 inches and hit OK. Once you've got that, we've, we're sure that we're in this um, family type. So the 36, wait, that's not the right number. Let me rename it because it should be by 96. So that's eight feet. So now I can go here and you can do this two ways. You could type in 96 with the inches sign or you could have typed eight feet like that, eight and zero. It's the same thing and hit okay. And then by default, this will change to that one. So now you can see this one is taller and it gives you the dimension eight feet. And then this one is still seven feet. If I wanted both of these now to be the eight foot type, I can click here with this one selected and change that to that type. Notice now it appears as a type that you can select. Boom, and then just changes like that. So super quick, super easy. Um, if I wanted a totally different type, I'll show you how to load those into the model uh, with a window. Because now that we did doors, you are basically an expert on doors and you'll be an expert on windows if you just stick with me. Because watch this, the window is almost identical to placing a door. So we have door, now we go to window. By default you have this one. This one actually comes with a couple different families and a few more choices. So let's just start with the standard one that it gave me, fixed 36 by 48. And um, let's just drop it on here. Boom. So something happened. It says instance of this not cutting anything and it won't let me accept it. So let's have it show. It's going there. So let's just say delete. I think what happened is I accidentally clicked twice and I tried placing it out in the open. So um, here's a cool tip. If you're trying to make another version of anything that you have already in the model, let's say I wanted to place another door or create another window, I mean a um, window or another wall that's the same type as this, there's a tool in Revit. So let's say the door. If you notice, once you select the door here, this becomes kind of your modify panel. Over here under create, there's this tool called create similar. So create similar is super useful because rather than going back and saying door and trying to figure out which door type that was and then putting it in, if I know that's the right one, you can click that, click here, create similar, and now Revit will place a new version of that same thing. The same thing will happen with this window. Say I want to put that same type of window right next to it. Click there, click here, and then we can place it. Let's say I wanted to create a new wall. I can grab that wall. And now instead of clicking that, see it says CS is the shortcut. So I'm going to start using that. So create similar. I can draw that same type of wall out here and make like a little square. So I don't know why you'd want to do that, this, but um, the Create Similar is super helpful. Uh, let's zoom out so we can kind of see these windows. So let's say I run into an issue now. I want that window to be at the same height along the top as that door. Right now it's three feet off the ground and it's measuring to the next 
the top of that wall, which is 11 feet, but that's not a big deal. So we know this is a 36 inch tall window, or 36 inches wide by 48, so that's 4, and that's 3, so that's 7 feet. So we need to move that up another foot. If all I wanted was just to move this exact window up to there, I can use the move, or you can go here or here and add that extra foot. So this should go up to 4, right? If I move it over, you can get that. But let's say that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted this and this to have the same bottom and the same top. So now I need a larger window. So I would need a three foot sill height, but then a five foot window to hit the eight. So if I want to do that, let's look in here. Do we have one? 36 by 72, what's that, six feet? That's too high. So I need to go down one. So you here you could go down there, or if I want to modify this and place one that is exactly five feet or 60 inches, let's do that. We just did that with the door, so now we should be pros. Um, let's go duplicate, change this to not 72. Um, this one you can see here it's six feet, and we want this five feet. So this is going to be 60 inches. Say OK. Let's double check. OK, we're there. And then here we're going to change the height to 5. Hit OK. And look at that. Looks good, right? So here's another cool tool in Revit. If you go modify, there's this guy, match properties. So if we click this and we want that one to look just like that one, you click there and what's happened? Why is this one different? That's because if we click this one, you'll notice the sill height is 3. This one we modified it, remember we put four. So you could change that, or I'll show you another cool tool. This one is called a line. You can click a line and then move your mouse here. It also works in the 3D view or in the floor plan. You can click first, you want to, you don't click the object you want to move. You want to click where you would want to align it to. So I want to align the bottom of this window. It would also work with the top of there or the top of the door if you click the top. I'm going to do the bottom of that window with the bottom of that one, boom, and there we go, we got them to align. So that's pretty much the basics of a window. You just choose a family, you make sure you get it. So let's say um, we want a different type of window, and it's not in the model right now. So let's say there's we just need something really, oops, I went into the family editor. If you double click a family, you go into this kind of little window. If you notice that everything here has changed and it says load into project, um, if you're trying to do this, then that's right. That's how you would actually change the, the what's actually modeled in that family. If that's not what you're trying to do, it you can just say no and don't edit the family, and it will bring you back to your model. So don't worry about that. That only happened because I double clicked on there. Um, let's say, um, let me um, tile my views because I've lost them for some reason. Let's say, hey, look at that. We got kind of the big one here now. It's kind of strange how it just alternates which one it gives you. Let's say I want to load a new type of window. We need something really cool for this side. So let's go to architecture, window, and then I don't see what I want here. I want something different than these, something that's more interesting. Or let's say for a specific project, you went to the manufacturer website and you have a different family or your firm has a whole library of, fam of families and you know that type of window exists but it's not in your model, that just means that Revit hasn't loaded that family into this project. Um, it doesn't mean you can't get it, it just means that it, by default Revit doesn't load every single family possible because that would make the model very big and slow. What it does is it brings in whatever the defaults are in that template. So your office, if it's always using a specific type of window family, it may start putting that in the template. But if it's not, if it's a special case or something different, you can go here. If you start off at architecture, so you can go to um, like the family here, um, or you could go under manage. And sorry, I always go to manage, but it's insert. So if you go to insert, you go to load family and then here it just you want to think about what is it that I'm trying to bring in is there an opening window so I'm trying to bring in a different window family 
So by default, it's going to open up like where the default Revit like library folder is. And then if you click through these, you'll start seeing different types of windows. Um, and it shows you a little preview of it. So let's look at what we've got by default here. So yeah, let's do that weird round one. Um, this is kind of cool. Just like a giant window. Crown wall awning. So let's grab. So you can see there's all sorts on this. Kind of cool. So let's say I want to load that into the model. So you select that and we say open. And then sometimes that happens. You get no choices. And other times you'll get another window that pops up that asks of that family, how many instances do you want to load in? So um, it didn't give us that option, but now if we go to window, I'm going to hit cancel real quick. Notice it's loaded that and brought in three different types with it. And if I just go to my model now, it will let me drop one in. Just put that on top of the door. So that's pretty cool, and it shows up here. So if I wanted then to start aligning this or moving it or anything like that, or putting specific heights or anything like that, we can do that. Let's say that should be 9.6. Um, so that's clean there. And you can see if we wanted to modify that family type, you would do the same thing. Select it, edit type, duplicate, change the settings. So pretty straightforward. So if you have questions on that, just let me know. Um, we can go over that. But as we start modeling more, we'll be doing this process over and over and over. And so it should become kind of second nature to you.